after seeing the types of transport mechanisms in the body let's talk about each one of them in detail so we start with the passive transport mechanisms the word passive in itself means two characteristic features one no energy is requirement in passive transport mechanisms and the second the movement of molecules or particles takes place from high to low that is from an area of their higher concentration to an area of their lower concentration so these two are the features of passive transport mechanisms now passive transport mechanisms are of further of two types simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion simple diffusion we'll talk about simple diffusion first simple diffusion is because of random thermal motion of particles now what does this mean the example that we've been given since 10th or 12th standard that if we open a bottle of some fragrance in a corner of a room the fragrance can be felt or it can be smelled throughout the room it spreads right so there was no energy required but the particles or the molecules moved from that bottle to the other corner of the room it means that the motion of the particles was from an area of their higher concentration to an area of the lower concentration without the use of energy now that defines passive movement but how do you differentiate between simple and facilitated diffusion it's very simple simple diffusion means the molecules or the movement now we're talking about simple diffusion related to the cell membrane remember so when simple diffusion across cell membrane occurs it means the molecules move through the cell membrane or through these proteins called channels now if you remember we had talked about proteins functions as transport mechanisms in transport mechanisms the proteins function as channels carriers or pumps so here in simple diffusion these proteins act as channels and not carriers and not pumps simple diffusion is either directly through the lipid layer or through proteins acting as channels now there are certain substances like respiratory gases oxygen carbon dioxide and various other substances that are lipid soluble so they pass directly through the lipid bilayer but there are certain substances which are lipid insoluble they pass through these proteins if these proteins are channels then the passage of these particles will be termed as simple diffusion now what do you mean by channels and what do you mean by carriers now imagine i am a protein so for me to be a channel a substance has to pass through me so i'll be a channel if a substance comes i move aside and the substance passes this is a channel it is basically like a highway so substance just has to pass through it so this is a channel now what is a carrier remember carriers are not used in simple diffusion in simple diffusion only channels are used i'm talking about carriers to clear your confusions carriers basically means if i am a protein for me to act as a carrier the substance has to come i'll hold the substance and i'll take it to the other side and release you get my point this is a carrier so the difference between channel and carrier is that a channel just allows the substance to pass without actually taking it and moving it to the other side a carrier on the other hand will hold the substance and pass it physically to the other side and channels are used in simple diffusion while as carriers they operate in facilitated diffusion so coming back to simple diffusion we said that simple diffusion is due to random thermal motion due to vibration of the molecules the thermal energy that is present that causes random motion of molecules that is simple diffusion in body in physiology the simple diffusion means passage through the cell membrane the lipid bilayer or through proteins acting as channels that is simple diffusion now let's talk about channels a little like i explained what channels are and how they function they just allow the passage of molecules through them these channels are of three types based on gating now what do you mean by gating of a channel gating of a channel in the literal sense means there are gates or there are certain structures which keep these channels closed when the substance is not present so when the substance comes these gates open that is the channels open and allow the substance to pass so this is known as gating 
based on the gating the channels are of three types ligand gated voltage gated and stretch gated what do you mean by ligand ligand can be any extracellular or intracellular substance say a hormone extracellular or intracellularly say a second messenger like CAMP so these can act as ligand so basically ligand has a receptor site on the channel so ligand binds to the receptor site and it causes changes which cause the opening of these proteins and they act as channels you can see as the ligand binds this gate opens and the substance is allowed to pass remember the substance passes on its own the protein does not carry it therefore it is a channel right so this is a ligand gated channel coming to the second part which is the voltage gated channel what do you mean a voltage gated these channels are kept closed in response to the voltage across the cell membrane now normally under physiological conditions at rest the insides of the cell membrane on the inner aspect of the cell membrane are usually negatively charged and on the outer aspect there is positive charge so this is the resting state whenever there is change in the voltage that is the charges reverse at that site this causes opening of this gate and the protein acts as a channel so these are voltage gated channels they are sensitive to the voltage across cell membrane the third part is stretch gated these are mechanosensitive channels that is whenever there is stretching of the cell membrane there is opening of the channels so these are the three types of channels which are used in simple diffusion to allow the passage of non lipid soluble or lipid insoluble substances lipid soluble substances passed directly through the lipid bilayer so that completes simple diffusion moving on to facilitated diffusion facilitated diffusion is a type of passive diffusion right and we already know passive diffusion is characterized by no energy requirement and movement of molecules from an area of their higher concentration to an area of their lower concentration all right let's discuss about facilitated diffusion facilitated itself means it is helped or assisted okay now we know that the cell membrane has certain transmembrane proteins right this is a transmembrane protein and we've already seen that this protein can act either as a channel a carrier or a pump all right we've already seen its role as channels under simple diffusion as carrier it helps in facilitated diffusion so facilitated diffusion means movement of a molecule from an area of its higher concentration to an area of its lower concentration with the help of carrier proteins all right let me show you here in the mechanism what happens exactly okay this is the carrier protein all right now the carrier protein normally at rest is open only halfway right it can be open either on the outside or on the inside of the cell this is the cell membrane okay and this is a transmembrane protein carrier protein so carrier protein remains halfway open either outside or inside okay for this example for understanding purposes we'll talk about this area being outside and this area being inside so in all the three diagrams the lower area is inside the cell and the upper area is outside the cell so this is the substance the green is a molecule which is now being diffused by this method facilitated diffusion okay so let's see the mechanism so what happens is that this molecule arrives at this carrier protein now this carrier protein has a specific receptor site for that molecule okay it has a specific receptor site so this molecule will bind to this receptor site all right it will bind here to this receptor site and this binding is loose okay it is loose binding so we see here that there is a receptor here receptor on the carrier protein is now bound with the molecule which is to be diffused to the other side okay so the, here we've seen that the molecule is bound to the carrier protein this binding causes conformational changes in the structure of this carrier protein this carrier protein which is open halfway on one side now undergoes conformational changes and opens halfway on the other side right now remember it remains open only halfway 
therefore it is a carrier protein if it remains open throughout it becomes a channel right so it remains open only halfway so the molecule binds causes conformational changes and causes opening on the opposite side now since this is a loose binding the molecule is easily released on the other side of the membrane so this is the mechanism of facilitated diffusion okay but here you have to remember a point facilitated diffusion can be in either direction either from outside the cell to the inside or from within the cell to the outside this is not fixed but what is fixed is that is that always from high to low this direction is fixed but this direction outside inside is not fixed okay so this is a very important point that you should remember when it comes to facilitated diffusion now facilitated diffusion has three basic properties or characteristics first is vmax second is specificity and third is inhibition coming to vmax vmax means maximum velocity or the maximum rate of diffusion all right if we plot a graph against rate of diffusion and concentration of the molecule the graph is somewhat like this all right it is somewhat like this okay this is the graph and here we get something called as vmax so let me explain this graph to you initially initially when the concentration of substrate is low when the concentration of molecule is low and we gradually increase its concentration the rate of diffusion increases linearly all right so there is direct proportionality in its initial part but as we keep on increasing the concentration of the molecule the rate of diffusion goes on decreasing and it reaches a maximum value right and this maximum value the maximum rate of diffusion is known as vmax now why does this occur this occurs because these carrier proteins they are limited there's a fixed number of carrier protein present in the plasma membrane right so as the concentration of molecule goes on increasing the number of carrier proteins being used goes on increasing for example if one molecule uses one carrier protein i have increased the concentration to 10 molecules so now 10 carrier proteins are being used but if there are only 50 carrier proteins when the concentration of the molecule reaches 50 all 50 will be utilized at the same time now if i increase the concentration to say 60 molecules we need additional 10 carrier proteins which are not there so those additional 10 molecules will not be diffused to the other side right so we reach a maximum limit of diffusion and that maximum rate is known as vmax all right so this is the graph that we obtain between concentration and rate of diffusion and this is a very characteristic feature of facilitated diffusion in simple diffusion we have seen that this is the graph it is a straight line there is direct proportionality because we do not need any carrier proteins there okay as the concentration increases the rate of diffusion will increase don't get this confused this is simple diffusion and this is for facilitated diffusion okay moving to the second property specificity now this property states that if a carrier protein is there suppose this is a carrier protein all right it will transfer or it will diffuse only a particular molecule or a group of molecules okay for example this is a carrier protein for glucose so it will easily let glucose pass through it but it will also let galactose move through it so there are certain carrier proteins which are specific only for one molecule or they may be specific for a group of related molecules okay this is what you mean by specificity they're specific for one molecule or one group of related molecules so this is the property of specificity okay coming to the third property inhibition now inhibition is of two types competitive and non-competitive competitive the word is self-explanatory it means there is competition now what is the competition imagine this is a carrier protein right we are taking the same example here this is a carrier protein for glucose and also transports galactose right now glucose and galactose both are present now both want to diffuse to the other side now which of these molecules will diffuse first right so there is a competition between these two molecules to get diffused so this is competitive but why the word inhibition inhibition because if glucose moves it will not allow galactose to move so galactose diffusion is inhibited or on the other hand if galactose moves then glucose will not move so galactose diffusion inhibits the movement of glucose so we see that there is a competition 
and the other molecule is inhibited okay so we say it is competitive inhibition now non-competitive inhibition we see this is a carrier protein and say there are two molecules a and b right now between these two molecules only a can get diffused this carrier protein is specific for a and it is not specific for b but what happens is that b does not allow a to pass to get diffused right so there is no competition remember b cannot be diffused by this carrier protein so there is no competition of being diffused but just because b is present it does not allow a to pass through so it inhibits a right but non-competitively okay so this is the example or the concept of inhibition so that's it about facilitated diffusion